Hello, welcome to this video tutorial for DT Register 2.7 configuration. Um, there are multiple videos to cover all the configuration options uh, as we wanted to break it up and not have one really long video. Um, on this video we'll, can, we'll start with the messages tab. So I'm already in the back end uh, components DT Register configuration which I can also get to from the DT Register control panel and this is based on version 2.7.0 okay on the messages tab these are on-screen messages uh, throughout various parts of DT register these are the messages that will show on the screen um, you can see that each one uh, has the what you see is what you get editor uh, this what you see here is uh, JCE which is what we recommend uh, as opposed to the default tiny MCE editor um, that really shouldn't be used ever uh, so JCE is free and that's what we would recommend um, so here you can see that you'll have some messages that are loaded by default on install you can configure these however you want the thank you message is what shows on screen after a successful registration you can see there are a couple tags that you can use over here uh, event name and event date that will dynamically populate um, to show the information based on what event was just registered for then you see pay later thank you message this is uh, the same thing except this will show after uh, a registration if the pay later option was used so basically the first thank you message will show for all registrations unless pay later was used uh, since pay later would uh, require some additional action by the user to you know mail you in a check or something of that nature uh, there's a separate message so you can maybe provide some additional instructions uh, make sure you do have this message configured uh, if, if you have a message not configured and DT register tries to display it then you'll have some uh, a blank area on the screen so make sure you do have them configured um, they can be the same message if you don't need any additional instruction um, message to display for full event if your event capacity has been reached uh, and it's full and somebody clicks the full button this is what will show uh, if the if you have disabled the waiting list in your event then you'll just get this message that will display on screen by itself if you have enabled the waiting list message or the waiting list then this full event message will show but below it will be the registration form that somebody could fill out to get on to the waiting list um, then here you do have the message to display after a successful waiting list addition so instead of getting the regular thank you message the user would get this uh, waiting list message cutoff date message uh, if you've set a, a cutoff date for the event that date has come and the event is now closed if a user attempts to register for that event they will get this message and like uh, we're no longer accepting registrations make that say whatever you want um, your terms and conditions if you have enabled terms and conditions in the main configuration area um, this is the message that will display in your terms pop-up window this is a global terms and conditions and you can display whatever you want and then uh, within each event you do have the ability to specify a a custom terms and conditions message that is only for for that event but unless you do that this global terms will be used um, on that note you can also specify a custom thank you message and pay later thank you message per event if you need to so these are global messages but you can get more specific within each event if needed okay uh, private event message if your event has been set to private or if you are using one of the two configuration options uh, overlapping event check or prerequisite events that would require your registration to require login um, then this is a message that will display if somebody tries to register and they are not logged in 
So here you might want to give a link to registration or something of that nature. Okay, prerequisite event message. Somebody tries to register for an event and they have not registered already for the selected prerequisite events, then this is a message that will display. You can use this prereq events tag, uh, which will automatically show a, uh, a bulleted list of events that the user has to have already registered for. Overlapping event message, uh, if you have the overlapping event check ena enabled, um, this is the message that will show if a user tries to register for something um, that overlaps with something they've already registered for. Okay, let's jump on to the emails tab. Um, this is what, uh, you know, where you configure all your emails that are that are sent out during the during registration process and other activities. Uh, you have a from name and from email. You will want to fill this in. Uh, any emails that go out uh, from DT Register will show as from this name and from this address. Um, then here, the next thing is a front end event notification. You can put an address in here, and this is who will get notified whenever somebody does activity on the front end. So if somebody creates an event, edits an event, or deletes an event on the front end management system, this person will be notified. So you can select what activities you want to be notified for. The thanks email, this is a, like the confirmation email that the user will receive after they register for your event. Uh, this does not matter how they paid or anything of that nature, it's the same email. You can make a custom thank you email per event as needed. Uh, here you can see a list of email tags that you can use. These are pretty self-explanatory, uh, but you can see you can pull in the, the event name, date, location, um, and you can see an example, and you should have an email such as this that was loaded by default on install, uh, as an example. Uh, location details will show, like the address, phone number, email, so forth for your for your location. Um, group number will pull just a, an actual number of how many are in the group. Amount is the total registration fee. Then you have amount paid, amount due. You can show the amount with no tax, and then you have a, a tax tag to show the actual tax amount. Uh, the payment method, confirmation number is what's created for each record. Uh, barcode, if you're using barcodes and you want to include that in the email, you can do that with this tag. Um, and then you have your status, paid status, uh, username and password, that's if you're using the um, auto user creation uh, function that can be enabled per event. Uh, if you're using that and you want to display within the email the person's username and password that they created. You can use these tags. Uh, the date they registered. And then the group member tag, this is a newer one, where within these curly bracket group member tags, uh, similar to what you see right here, uh, you can put any of the other tags. Um, and then what this will do is it will display the information of each of these tags for each member in a group registration. So. So you have three people, this would show three times, one for each person. Uh, as a side, uh, side note, on the email tags, every single field within DT Register has its own tag. So you have these kind of global tags, um, or general, general type tags, but then like you see here, there's a tag for address and first name and country and email, all of that. So, uh, and you can customize what all of these tags are. All your fields, you say what the actual tag is, and then you can use that tag in any of your emails. Okay, here after the, uh, on the thanks email, you can specify the subject as well. Um, the subject will, will accept um, not all of the tags, but it'll accept event name, event date, uh, status, and paid status. That'll be the same on all of these emails. Then here on the admin notification email, um, as of version 2.7, you can customize the admin email uh, for the first time. Uh, so this is the email that the admin will receive after a new registration has been done. And you can figure, configure this to include whatever information that you would like it to include and how you want it to be seen, uh, including the, the barcode. Um, then as well as the subject, so you can configure that to say 
you know, so you know you have a registration of a specific event just by reading your email subject. Uh, and then you have a couple emails here that uh, by default are not enabled, but if you enable the email, uh, they are emails that will be sent automatically based on function. Uh, here the status change email, if you change a record status from say pending to active, um, if this email is enabled, that person will automatically receive an email that will tell them whatever you put here. And in this case you can see it says the status of your registration of you know, the, the event has been updated to whatever the new status is. And so you can configure that, and of course that can include any of the other information that is seen in the above emails. And of course you have their subject to configure. And then page status change email, same type of setup as what I just described, except this will apply if the, uh, if the payment status of, um, of the user's record has been changed. So if it's been changed from not paid to paid, then they would get this email uh, telling them that the status of their payment has been updated. So you can configure that as needed. And so that is uh, that covers your on-screen messages and your emails. Uh, to see information on the rest of the configuration tabs, please see the rest of the video tutorials. And after you update your settings, make sure you save it uh, so those settings can be applied. Thank you.